But is it appropriate for someone who no. you met? Yeah. No, 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 no. There's very little about what was just said that's appropriate. So for this week, I thought I'd do something a little different. I have a club called the Love Life Club and every month I answer questions of my members. This one caught my attention as something that would be fun to bring to all of you here. It was someone who asked, how do you know the difference between someone who is love bombing you and someone who has real intentions? This was my answer. And by the way, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to this channel, and hit the notification bell so that you get notified the next time we do a video. Can we do one final question? Please, yeah. From someone called Tamila. How do I differentiate between love bombing and genuine attention? I met a man online, in brackets, I'm traveling out of country. He was pursuing me and is waiting to meet when I'm back in the US. We're in different states and he's organizing a date in his city, San Diego, in a month. In his text, there's a lot of us talk, talk of living together, how many kids I'd want, asking me for my preferences on houses, calling me wifey, etc. Help, how do I differentiate between love bombing and genuine intention? How long has she been speaking to this man? She met him online. But how long ago? It doesn't say. But is it appropriate for someone who no. you've met? Yeah. No, 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 no. There's very little about what was just said that's appropriate. It's, you know, it that has love bombing written all over it. How do you not um, get swept up? Because it's a lovely thing to hear, right? You meet someone you find attractive, whatever, and they're saying all the right things, and they're saying all these, like, how do you stop yourself from getting carried away in those kinds of words? Here's what you hear in your head. You hear, imagine someone just rang your phone like it was an unknown number and you picked it up and it was a automated message. And it said, you have been selected from a random pool of people to collect $2 million. All you need to do to collect your winnings is to speak now with your bank account details so that we can deposit the funds. <laughs> That's what you imagine being said. Yeah. Because if that happened, we'd all be like, hang up. Why you, well, this doesn't make any sense why you're giving me $2 million right now. I've never been that lucky in my entire life. It doesn't add up. $2 million is not that easy to make. No. If someone out of nowhere starts saying, wifey this, wifey that, we're gonna have this many kids, we're gonna live in this house. Either they are projecting to a scary degree, which means that there's something unhealthy about them and they, they believe they're this in love with you and they're mistaken because they don't even know you. So that love isn't real and you're dealing with a really unhealthy person or you're dealing with a scammer. What they're scamming you out of, it might be sex, it might be money, it might be just all of your energy and they're not gonna give you anything in return. They're just gonna bring you out to San Diego and have a fun with you and then send you back and be like, what, what are you, wifey what? I didn't say any of that. I don't remember any of that. It's, you know, there's, there's some, they're trying to get something. Yeah. They're trying to get something. Um, so you you have to start seeing it for what it really is. Mm. It feels nice. It feels nice to be told you just won a million dollars. But you can't trust it. And it's, this, it's the same with this. How can you feel this way about me? You do not know me. You have no idea who I am. So either take the time to actually get to know who I am and let's start again. Or um, I'm going to see this for what it is, which is either a gross projection or a manipulation. Um, but someone can't, someone can only know you over time by asking questions, by taking the time to actually get to know you. And by the way, be careful of like traveling to see someone who you don't know. I mean, in general, are they willing to make an effort to see you? 
could they meet you halfway? You know, like, is there a way for the two of you to meet in a way that requires at least some mutual investment? Because the, you know, fly to be with me in my backyard is a very easy thing to say to someone. And I'm not saying that means they're dangerous or evil, but at the very least, it's like, it's a lot of work for you and none for them. I think that's such a good point. We've made it before, but um, just when somebody asks you to fly to see them it feels like investment because you go oh my god they really want to spend all this time with me mm -hmm. but actually it's no investment if the person is thinking well i'm gonna have a nice weekend i'm gonna get sex out of it and then they fly home and i never have to think about it again or i certainly don't have to think about it further than that weekend and until i decide mm -hmm. But we think it feels like, because it feels like investment, right? It feels like it's something serious because you think, oh, this person wants to spend the weekend with me. Exactly. So, it, yeah, I think exactly. that's really interesting. What it is, is you're depositing a whole lot of money for very little investment on their mm. part. Thank you so much for watching. Before you go, if finding love is a priority for you this year, I have something for you that is brand new. I'm really excited about it. It's a training that's completely free that you can do right now that shows you how to avoid casual situations, how to finally find your person and how to get the commitment that you deserve with them. It's called Dating With Results. Thousands of people have now been through this training and it's available for you to watch right now at datingwithresults.com. Go check it out. I can't wait to see what you think and I'll speak to you soon.